Hey everyone, so today I have a video that has been long awaited for. How to boost your D-Series engine. Got a kit from a friend, Luis Mendoza. Um, it's in my prior, prior video to this one. Um, it's a used kit. It's mostly eBay parts and they're in decent shape still, but I cleaned them up and got the stuff needed. Um, you're going to need quite a few things. You're going to need a hole saw or a really big drill bit for you when you drill the hole in the oil pan. Your oil feed lines, your return line, your turbo, your manifold, your gaskets, so on and so forth. All that will come with a turbo kit or you can piece it together slowly. I've got a Godspeed turbo, T3, T4OE, just like what I ran in my white EF. Log manifold, this is, like I said in my last video, this is the worst manifold to run. But I'm working with what I got right now, and I'm not trying to push a lot of boost, so I'm not worried about it. I just want the turbo noise for right now, and I can upgrade later. I will show you what you need step by step. What to do to the engine bay, what to do to the bumper to get everything ready for your intercooler, your piping. The only thing I cannot show you is how to tune it, because personally I don't have the stuff. I kind of have the know-how, but not exactly. Um, show you how to you bolt the turbo kit on, basically, and then you mark your stuff for drilling the return line in the oil pan. Drain the oil first, drill the hole, pull the oil pan off, use the nut and weld it if you have a welder, JB weld it, or if you're just using a double nut system, just do that, and I'd put JB welder gasket sealer over it and let it dry, just so it doesn't leak. Connect your return line. Connect your inlet uh, to the turbo, your oil line, put it all together and fire it up. But it sounds easier than it is. It actually is not too bad when you have the kit done right. So I'll get started. And Okay, now that you got the stock manifold out of the way, you're gonna bolt in, just kind of mock up the turbo manifold, turbo downpipe, and everything. See where everything sits so you can mark it on the oil pan so you can start marking your holes for the drain return line. After that, you'll drain the oil and then mark your hole. Uh, after your hole's marked, you'll drill it out. Don't drill too big because then you'll have a big problem whenever you go to put that in. Make sure you measure three, four times if you have to, and then drill once. Basically, you do that. Make sure the oil's out first. Then after the hole's drilled, pull the oil pan off. It's easier to do it with it on the car than off the car. Okay, so we ran into issues with the turbo manifold when we went to put it on. You see the big gap up there? Because it can't make the fit, because the exhaust is too long, the downpipe, this is a very common problem, not just in eBay downpipes, but as in high dollar downpipes, is sometimes the high dollar downpipes will fit, but it's too long, or it will, it'll barely fit and be too short. Sometimes it's just hit and miss with it, doesn't matter what brand, honestly. I've seen really expensive ones do this too, and I'm not even sure the brand of this, it just looks like a really nice one. Um, we're gonna go ahead and cut it off here take this part and get it welded on at the exhaust shop later on they'll have to probably shorten the length of it and adjust the angle because this right here it's facing up basically and it's hitting it and it's just not going to let it go it's touching the oil pan and that's very bad you'll be heat sinking and all kinds of heat soaking all the heat will go in your motor you'll overheat and you'll never figure out why so basically just cut it basically we'll do that and i will show you what to do next Okay, now that we got the mark right here, make sure you don't go too high or too low because then oil will start backing up in the turbo too high and you won't be able to get it in there. Basically, that's, that's about the best level because this is a nut that will tighten on the back side. 
So right there, we'll drill the hole. And then we're gonna have to cut this afterwards. We'll try to get the measurement just right and then we'll cut up top. But drill it on the car, make sure you drain the oil first. Okay, the drain return line is in. Drill the hole out, as you've seen. I had to get a bigger drill bit, but other than that, yeah, it's the same thing. I threaded it in. It's a very tight fit. I might not even have to put the nut on the backside, but just to be safe, I'm going to, because it is in there tight. I had to use a crescent wrench. Now you're gonna wanna undo all of these bolts. Remember, there's a few hidden way. Okay, so now we're underneath the intake manifold. I took the oil filter off so you could see where we're working. Right here, there's a connector that I just removed. That's the oil pressure switch. That is where your feed line goes from your oil, from your oil pressure switch all the way to your turbo. Normally there would be a T-piece or a sandwich filter. I will install the T-piece later, but I do not recommend you install your turbo kit without the T-piece or the sandwich filter. You need to know what your oil pressure is. I constantly check my oil day in, day out, every time I drive, just to make sure everything's okay. But not everybody's me, so make sure you have the T-piece before you install it. Mine will just be a direct feed. I'll show you how that comes off. Normally it's a socket and it's pretty big, at least a 23 millimeter or something like that. But I'm going to use a crescent wrench. Put the turbo manifold, the whole assembly back in, and get everything bolted up. Then that line will run to the back to the um, oil oil pressure sensor, and we'll take that out, and I'll show you how to do that next. But we'll get started putting everything back in. Okay, so now that we got it all bolted up and going good, we're going to take the line. We're basically just going to... Okay, while we're down here, we're going to measure and see exactly how much pipe is needed or hose, I should say. So we're gonna stick it on and then basically run it over to here. And about that much needs cut off. So I'll cut a little bit farther just to be safe. Okay, so what we did is I found a hose for the heater core. It's, it's a spare one. It's high pressure for antifreeze, so it'll have no problem holding oil run through it. I'll put some hose clamps on the end of both of them, and then we'll call that good. Now it's time to take the bumper off so we can fit the intercooler and piping. Next, we're gonna have to mount the intercooler. Most likely, I'm gonna have to either drill holes or use the brackets on the bottom.
So we got the intercooler piping on, the intercoolers put on, everything's buttoned up. All we gotta do is run a hose from here to the turbo to activate the wastegate for when it hits maximum boost. And then run a T-line vacuum from this to one of the open vacuums. That's a map sensor, so I suggest you don't do it to that. Your best bet is on the back side of the motor. But I'm going to show you real quick how to clock the turbo. Uh, this is really important. There's two different ways to clock the turbo. You've got the compressor side, and then you've got the actual turbine um, exhaust side. There's six total 13 millimeter bolts, and you loosen those to clock the actual turbo itself, which is the exhaust side. That is to straighten up your oil line or have tight clearances like that. And to do this side is so that the intercooler piping can reach. So I'll do that real quick and just keep an eye on how I do it. That's how you clock the turbo. Um, as you can see how close the uh, downpipe is to the actual intercooler piping. The downpipe will be heat wrapped and the turbo will get a turbo blanket. You want to keep that intercooler pipe piping as far away as you can. So if you can clock the turbo more, I would do it more, but I'm, I'm at my maximum clock limit on the turbo because it prop the casing is most likely hitting something. So. But this should work, especially for a low boost setup like I'm going to be running. I'll put a clamp on that and run the lines, and we'll probably hear it test fire. So we got a few lines on. Got the clamp on. Um, the GoPro's been having issues, so that's why it didn't record. But we got the issues resolved, hopefully. So Casey will hold the light, and I will figure out where in the world I am going to hook this up. Okay, now it's got vacuum for that. It's got vacuum for this. Basically, the only thing we have left to do is hook up the boost gauge and start it up, and hopefully, it runs really good for a while. <laughs> so, after you get all the vacuum on, it's taken care of. Make sure everything's good. Make sure all the connections are good. I decided not to use this map sensor connector. This is running and it's teed all the way to the back and the boost gauge is teed off on the um, fuel pressure regulator. So make sure every connection's good, all the bolts are tight, there's no leaks, and go ahead and start it up. It's going to be loud. test drive. We're going to see how it does going through the gears. Five pounds. Five pounds is what it said. You hear that turbo wind down? Oh yeah, it's running really good now. Of course, there is no tune on here, so if you push it too hard, it is possible to blow it up. I'm light on the throttle and you can hear that turbo spool. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, share, and uh, 
I want to give a shout out to Casey Williams who helped and Luis Mendoza for the turbo kit for giving it to me cheap. Thanks.